This is IAT 806 Lecture 3.3 Transformations. In this segment, what we're going to talk about is the problem that I alluded to at the end of uh, segment 3.2, which is the question of how do we generally solve the problem of moving shapes around uh, inside a Java program, inside a processing program. You'd really like it so that you'd specify, I'd like this object to move, you know, from left to right. And you'd like that to be specified in one place. And certainly, you'd rather not have to um, fiddle around with all the details of what the polygon's geometry is at every iteration that you do that. Every time you want to draw something, you don't want to change all the polygon's vertices. You'd like to specify the shape once, and do the drawing and in different locations separately. So what we had before, which is just simply adding 10 to the x and y vertex values of the, that polygon that we showed in the previous chunk, wasn't very general. What if you wanted to move by some other value? You'd rather not have to reach into the code to change that 10, 10 to 20, 20 or something. If you had wanted to have multiple copies of that shape, you'd like to have something that Who's, uh, a piece of code whose job it is to draw the shape separated from the question of where to draw that shape. And so what we need is a general method of moving polygons or whatever geometry of some given shape. So let's talk about that right now. So the first um, of these transformations, as they are called, are techniques for telling the computer graphics system change the location where subsequent things are going to be drawn. The first of these is translation. So translation gives us another way of drawing in a new location. In essence, what it does is it moves the origin or the coordinate system by the amount that you say, such that subsequent calls that follow, like this begin shape, end shape that we had from before, those things are interpreted as taking place in a new location. So here is the standard begin shape, end shape, array access thing that we had before. And now let's uh, imagine that what we're going to do is that we're going to issue before that a translate call. So as before, we're going to change its location by 10 in X and 10 in Y. And we're going to issue the translate call before drawing the shape. So first, when we do translate uh, by 10, 10, that says move the origin over by 10 and down by 10. And then subsequent calls then take place in this new location, illustrated here on the slides by shifting over and downwards by 10 pixels each. Okay, so that's what translation does, is it moves the origin by the amount that you specify. Okay, so before we go to rotation, let's see that in action. So we have this piece of code from before, right, where we uh, specify the geometry, right, the actual geometric location, and, and do the begin shape, for loop, vertex, end shape thing. And now what we're going to do is, also, is follow that with a translate call, and then we're just going to do exactly the same stuff again. So let's press play and see what that looks like. So there it is. This is um, the original shape, which is white, and drawn on top is the translated shape that is translated by 1010. Let's change that now to, you know, 3020. Change that to 30, change that to 20, press play, and there it is. So that now is instead of moving over by 10, 10 down here, it's moved over 30 and down by 20. And what we can do is we can just simply issue translate and drawing these shape calls. And I recognize, for those of you who are experienced computer programmers, that this is kind of an inefficient way of doing things, but let's just Let's just live with it for a moment. So what I'm going to do is translate over by 10, and we're going to go left, up rather, by minus 20. So we're going to translate upwards. And we're going to set the fill to be uh, uh, something, a kind of a cyan color, a greenish color. OK, so the first shape is white. It's drawn at its lo or original location. Then we translate it over by 30 and down by 20, and that's the red one. Then we translate it over by 10 more and up, that is to say, negative 20. And there you can see that uh, the green um, polygon and the white polygon are pretty much at the same Y location. OK, so that's a brief demonstration of the way in which um, 
uh, translation works. All right, so now let's talk about rotation. So much like translation, rotate moves our drawing space so that we can draw, in this case, at different angles. And most of the time, you want to use rotation in conjunction with translation because rotate rotates the drawing area around the point zero, zero. So let's just see how that might look. Let's look at an example without any translation at all so we can just see the effect of rotation. So let's say we created a rectangle here. Uh, we're using a simplified shape now so that we don't have all that geometry and for loops to create too much to look at. And what we're going to do is simply draw a box, a rectangle that has its corner at 10, 10, and is 50 wide and 50 high. Next, what we need to do is we would like to be able to rotate um, this uh, figure, this rectangle, by 45 degrees. However, uh, processing's um, rotate call requires its um, rotate quantity to be in radians. And so to convert from degrees to radians, what we do is we uh, issue the radians uh, function. That is to say, we call radians with the number of degrees that we want converted. And what this does is, inside its uh, function, converts 45 degrees into the number of radians that is. And what we're going to do is assign that to this floating point value angle. Next, we would issue the call rotate by angle. And of course, rotate is expecting radians. And what that does is it rotates the coordinate system by 45 degrees clockwise. And as you can see, I've just shown in orange dashed lines what the new coordinate system looks like. Next, let's say that we issue a call rect. Again, 10, 10, 50, 50, the same as the rectangle before. But now what's going to happen is we're drawing it in this rotated coordinate space. And what we would end up seeing is that uh, rectangle rotated by 45 degrees. However, what actually appears on the screen, which is this area of where the black rectangle is, we would only see the right half of this, the right diagonal corner, uh, is what we'll end up seeing. So now let's go to processing and see that live. So our first thing that we did is um, we first did a background call to clear it to white and a fill color to give it that something like the orange color we've just seen. And this single rect call is the, rect as it, um, the rectangle as it originally appeared in the unrotated coordinate system. Now, let's add a little bit more information, compute the angle, set a new fill value so that we can distinguish the color, set, uh, reset the previous color so it looks a little bit lighter, and rotate by the angle, and draw the rect again. So all of this stuff is just basic. Uh, this stuff here about fill and background is just basically so you can distinguish the old from the new, and so it appears a little bit like what the slide has. So let's press play on that. So background and fill, the original rect, fill again, compute the radians, rotate by the angle. That's the important part here, and then the same rect call. And what we see is this is the former rectangle, unrotated, and this is the rotated one. Okay? So we can see that that is rotated about the origin by 45 degrees. Let's go back to the slides. So, if we wanted to try this from the start and added translation, what we should be able to do is to translate the location about which the rotation happens. So if you want to rotate about a different location in um, the coordinate system, what you would need to do is translate first. That moves the coordinate system and therefore also moves the location where subsequent rotates take place. So let's try to rotate around the center of the square. This means moving the origin and drawing the square around it. So the first thing we need to do is first redefine the rectangle a little bit. By default, processing's rectangles take the upper left corner that we see here as the origin. In order to, for us to reformulate the rectangle, what we need to do is to set the origin point to be negative 25, negative 25. And the reason why it's negative 25, negative 25 is because the width is 50 and the height is 50. 
So half of 50 is 25 in each case. Therefore, we issue the rect call at negative 25, negative 25. That puts its ordinary start point here, but it puts the geometric middle of the rectangle to be at the origin location, which I've just illustrated here as 0, 0. And once again, this uh, black rectangle here is illustrating the processing draw area. Next, what we will do is to translate by 35, 35. And the reason for translating is to translate 10, 10, kind of as we'd done in the, uh, previous examples, plus 25 in each direction to end up at 35, 35. The next thing we'll do is, once again, issue that rect call. Rect minus 25, minus 25, 50, 50 puts a, a new version of the rectangle once again, with its middle at the 35-35 translated point, but not rotated yet. Finally, what we would like to do is to compute the radian uh, value of 45 degrees and rotate by that angle, and that rotates the coordinate system as you see here, and then issue once again, for the third time, the rect call, minus 25, minus 25, 50, 50. And what that will end up doing is drawing the rectangle rotated by 45 degrees and rotated about its center. So now let's see what that looks like in the processing window. I've not shown the first uh, rectangle call where it's drawn in the uh, origin, but instead I've just done translate, followed by rect minus 25, minus 25, and that's um, showing um, just the uh, lighter orange rectangle that you see behind in the drawing area. Filled with a new color, rotated by uh, 45 degrees, turned that into radians, and then drawn it again after the rotation. And that has the effect of what you see here. That is to say, the rotated um, rectangle is shown, and you can see it's drawn on top of the previous one. So, as advice to you, because this can uh, dealing with geometric transformations like this can be a little bit confusing, what I would like you to do is, as you experiment, try applying rotation to your animations using draw. Right now, we've just been showing these examples without a, a setup or a draw method. We're just doing simple straight line coding so that there's a minimum amount of text for you to stare at on the screen and you can hopefully just focus on the key elements. The only thing that kind of ruined it for us is we have these background and fill calls and those things provide you know visual distraction but they're essential so that you can see the different things that we're drawing. Anyway, getting back to the slide, what variable would you wish to iter iterate in order to make the shape rotate over time. So do an experiment trying that out. Try making a custom polygon rotate instead of a square. And I advise you to do this because sometimes it can be very difficult to understand how translate, rotate, and so on uh, works with each other. And it, it can uh, take a little bit of time to, to, to learn how those things function well. So that's the end of lecture 3.3, Transformations.